and we'll uh, finish up the rest of the notes. So, someone give me a good definition for energy. What is energy? Kayla? Good. The ability to do work. Okay. There are five different forms of energy. Now, this is kind of confusing because up here, I told you this one was not rearranged the way I wanted it. But there are five forms. Okay. Someone give me one form. One type of energy. Anna? Sound energy. Good. Another one, Reagan? Light energy. Light energy. Okay. So we have sound. We have light. What else? Connor? Kinetic energy, which these two are actually part of mechanical energy. Okay, what else? Parker? Electrical and Nathan? Thermal energy. Very good. So here's kind of the breakdown. We already discussed uh, light energy. That was Thursday. We started electrical energy on Friday. We're going to finish that today. And then uh, tomorrow, hopefully, depending on how far we get in this week, guys, uh, we have one more set of notes after electrical. And it's called Other Forms of Energy. We're going to briefly look at mechanical, sound, and thermal. Okay? So that will be kind of our last little look at energy. But with electrical energy, electrical energy is a form of energy produced when electrons move from one place to another. How do we get electricity? What is that? How is electricity generated? Think about my uh, definition for lightning and how lightning is formed. Ethan A.? Good. It's when atoms, when electrons jump from one atom to the other. Okay. Uh, lightning is a good example of that. What's another example of that? Anna? Very good. Static electricity, right? When I'm stuffing my feet along the floor and gathering up electrons, then I go and touch somebody else, my too many electrons jump to the other person. Okay. And that's the shock that happens right there. Okay. Connor? All right, so lightning is a good, a good example of that. Then we also talked about uh, the devices we use to kind of control electricity, right? Um, we talked about the flow of, electric, uh, of electricity through a substance, whether it's a lot or a little. It's called the electric what? Everyone? Uh, the what? Current. There you go, the electric current, okay? Now, if you have a, lot, a big flow of electrons through a conductor, you would have a big electric current, right? The light bulb would be super bright, might even blow up. If you have a small flow of electrons through the current, then you have a small electric current. What would the light bulb look like then? If there's a low electric current, how would this look? Landon? Pretty dim, yeah. It's not going to be super bright, okay? So we also talked about the path that electricity will follow with the current. What do we call that path? It could be shaped in different ways. Yeah. What do we call that path? Could be shaped in different ways. What is this thing called? Trinity? A circuit. Good. Okay. The circuit is the path the current will flow through, all right? Now, there are two types of circuits. What are the two types called that we discussed on Friday? Hannah? Good. An open circuit and a closed circuit. Which type of circuit will turn the object on? How do you okay? Which type of, of those two, open and closed, which type will turn the object, or maybe, you know, a light bulb, will turn the object on? Kayla? Closed a closed circuit. Good. A closed circuit is where all the pieces are connected, right? There's no break in it anywhere, okay? What would happen with an open circuit? Connor? More, I mean, energy is flowing, but it's cut off, so it can't go to the light bulb and then so the light bulb will be off. off. Very good. Okay. So we have this one. What is this one? Open or closed? Everyone? Open. Open. Light bulb is off. And there's a big break right here. Okay. And then what is this one? 
a light bulb is huh? on. on. Good, light bulb is on. Okay. All right, so in circuits in general, there are four parts to it. Okay. What do we call um, the part that actually generates the power? Usually a generator or a battery, something that creates the electricity. It starts starts it up, like the engine. What is that component called? Not component. What is that part called? Sophie? The power source. The power source. Very good. Okay. What do we usually use as connectors that connect the power source to all the other parts? What do we usually use as the connectors? Parker? Uh, copper wire. Copper wire. Electrical wire. Okay. What do we call the object you want to turn on? A light bulb, a buzzer, a motor, a fan. Ethan A? Component. Component. You'll also see it called load sometimes. L-O-A-D. The load. Okay? And then uh, this one you don't have to have, but what is the one, what is it called, the little piece that you can either make it on or off with? Connor? Usually it's a switch, but some kind of control device. So, okay? So, we also took a little bit more about uh, control devices. Usually a switch looks something like this, where once you connect the two pieces, that closes the circuit, and then it would turn on. The minute you disconnect it, it turns everything off. Okay? Here's where we're picking up today. There are different ways of connecting multiple loads in a circuit. Okay? So this is kind of an example of how they're using loads instead of components. Let's say I want to have a circuit with three light bulbs on it. I need three, not just one. Okay? There are different ways to connect that circuit to make it work. Sophie? Open means there's think of it like a gate. When you open the gate, and that would turn electricity off. All right, keep working on that. All right. So different ways of connecting multiple loads in a circuit. One way is to connect them into a line or series so that the current flows from one load to the next in a continuous path. This is called a series circuit. Okay? Not this picture. This is a different kind of circuit. It should not be on this slide. This is a series circuit. Okay? A series circuit has one path. Okay? Here's the battery with the connector. The switch is closed. Therefore, it's a closed circuit, and electricity is what? On or off? On. On. Thank you. Here, we have all three loads or components connected in a line. And we do right now. Okay? Now, in this case, this one powering, this one battery, is sending power to three different devices. Okay? So let me ask you this. Will these bulbs be brighter or dimmer than if I only had one bulb? Caleb? Dimmer. Very good. Okay. It's kind of like, I mean, oh, I mean, it makes sense. If I only have this much power to give, and now I have to give it to three pieces instead of one piece, each one will get a less amount. You see what I'm saying? Okay. That will make it dimmer. This also means that if I open the switch, which ones turn off? All of them. Exactly. Okay? If there's a break in the circuit at any point at any point along the path, they all shut off because they're all on that one path. Okay? Uh, this is kind of like your uh, Christmas lights when you lose one bulb and the whole string shuts off. Kind of like that. Okay? It is. The other way to connect those multiple loads is in a parallel series or parallel circuit. Okay? A parallel circuit is shaped like this. And I'll explain that here in a minute. 
Another way to connect multiple loads is to divide the current among the different devices. Okay, so parallel circuit, okay? A parallel circuit is basically where each component has its own path, okay? So here's the battery. It has one path that goes to this light bulb and another, a whole separate path that goes to this light bulb. This is not a great example. I like this one better, okay? So you can look at it kind of like this. If this is the battery, okay, there's a path for this light bulb over here, right? So if there's a break here, will this light bulb still light up? Yes. Yes, it will. Okay? Because this path is still continuous. All right? There's a whole separate path here for this light bulb. I could trace my own path here. So now if there's a break here, will this one still light up? No. Yes, it will. This one? Oh, that one? If there's one? a break here, oh. this one will still light up. Yes? There's a light bulb here and a light bulb here. Okay? So, in a series circuit, or sorry, parallel circuit, each load or each device is on its own path. Okay? That way, if one shuts off, the other ones still light up. Do you feel like your Christmas lights where if you lose a bulb, the rest of them still light up? The ones that everybody wants, you know? Okay. Landon? Good question. So, for your pictures... Okay, as long as they look something. Well, hold on, yes. Um, Reagan, can I borrow your notes? Because you're so different than mine. Oh, great. Your first picture is great. Okay. Your series, or I'm sorry, your parallel circuit can look, or series circuit can look like this. All right? You have your one battery, and all three loads are on one path. Okay? Your parallel circuit. Look a little different. You'll have your battery, which is your power source for this one. Your light bulbs are much nicer than mine. There's one. Two, three. Okay? So that each bulb is on its own path, its own circle. If you think about setting one up for your teacher, so maybe she asks for your example, she should try to for you so you don't have to go through. Oh, I love it. Okay, my next question is this. In a parallel circuit, do you think these bulbs are brighter or dimmer than in a series circuit? Caleb? Mm -hmm. You think they're the same? They're actually brighter. Okay, and this is why. This battery powers each path the same way. So, you have one amount of power that goes to this path. The same amount of power is going to this path. And the same amount is going to this path. Okay? It powers each path on its own, basically. Instead of powering one path and dividing that among three things. It's very interesting. Trust me. Very. 
Okay. Caleb. Not Caleb, sorry. Landon. It's just confusing because Caleb's brother's name is Landon. But anyways, go ahead. How would it split into separate paths? Because how do I explain this? It I don't know how else to explain it except for the same it's the same power goes to this path, to this one, and to this one. It's not, in, instead of having that one circuit with three different things on it, it's almost like there's three circuits in one. There's a, a smaller circuit here, a medium circuit here, and a bigger circuit here. But each circuit is powered by the same battery. So it's each getting the same amount of energy. Is there a Uh, I guess it'd have to be separate wires. Unless you have one that has an actual split in it. Okay. All right. Hannah, Connor, and then we're moving on. Hannah. If there was a break, like, right after the battery, uh -huh. does that mean you lose your electricity? Correct. So, if the break-in circuit was here, okay, that means that the, none of them can get to the power source. Therefore, they would all turn off. Open the circuit, yeah. So you push this down, and that, and like the, like the switch behind there, when mm -hmm. it comes up, and you put it down, and then that's when it turns on all the lights. And it closes the circuit, yep. Yeah. So, it, do they all turn on at the same time, or like they're very close to each other? Um, probably more like very, very close to each other. Not quite instantaneous. All right, last part here is electromagnets, okay? You can also use electricity to form a magnet. This is how. An electromagnet is a temporary magnet formed by passing an electric current through a wire coiled around an iron core or a metal object, okay? So uh, the object would be something like a nail or a screw or a tack or something, okay? And if you can wrap the electrical wire around it, the wire itself does not make it elect does not make it a magnet. Okay? So let's say I can take this wire and disconnect it from the battery. So there's no electricity flowing. This uh, this nail would not be magnetic at that point. Okay, it's not going to attract the staple. But the minute I connect the wire and electricity is flowing, that turns this a uh, nail into a magnet. It gets magnetized by the electricity flowing around it. So it will then attract the staple. Okay. Now, electromagnets are used on a huge scale to power lots of machines. For example, um, in junkyards where they have lots of cars they need to move, if the cars don't work, they still have to move them. Okay. So what they do is they'll use a huge machine, like a big crane, with a massive electromagnet on it. Okay. They'll use a magnet. By turning the machine on, the magnet works. So it will pick up the car, they keep it on, they move it, and then when they put it down, they want to drop it somewhere else, they turn the magnet off, which drops the car, and then they can move it to get a different place. Does that make sense? Okay. Electromagnets are used in tons of machines. The difference between an electromagnet and a regular magnet is this thing is not magnetic if the electricity is off. It only becomes magnetized when electricity is on. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay, I'll take like two hands, but then we gotta go on to the study guide. 
Xfinity? If it's wire going, it doesn't, so it's not, if it were receiving the electricity, it would be the the nail itself would shock me. It doesn't shock. It's just for some, somehow the electricity passing around the metal, it doesn't electrify the metal, but it magnetizes it. Does that make sense? Good question. Yes. So, um, with the, like, nail, if you, like, put in a switch, the rest tomorrow. Hmm? Alright. Alright, for the first part, it says write the definition for each form of energy. Okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give those to you since we haven't discussed all of them yet. But what I do want you to see is I have particular parts of them underlined, okay? So, you do need to write the whole definition, but the underlined parts are the key words, okay? So, mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the combination of kinetic and potential. Kinetic plus potential gives you all of mechanical. But the better way to explain it is, it is the energy of motion. So be with me. It is kinetic plus potential. But the better way, it is the energy of motion. Electrical energy. This is when electrons move from one place to another. Okay. So, for example, if I gave you this exact same question on the test, and I told you you needed to write definitions for these inner types of energy, the underlined parts are what I would be looking for. When electrons move from one place to another. Light energy, energy carried by electromagnetic waves. It would not be correct to say light energy is energy carried by light. You cannot use the same word in its own definition. It doesn't make sense. Thermal energy is energy based on temperature of matter. We'll learn about that uh, tomorrow or maybe the day after. Sound energy is energy caused by the vibrations of two objects hitting each other. 